This building is a real mixture of style. So you think of the ancient Greek and Roman motifs that you see in many of the spaces. Here we are in the Yates Gallery, named after Sidney Yates, one of the great advocates of arts in the United States government. But if you were here in 1897, this was the room that was the reading room. This was the place of shush, big long tables where people would read books that were not to leave the library. The decorations, it's right out of the Renaissance. In fact, if you take a look and compare it to old pictures of the Doge's palace, you can even pick out identical details that were borrowed for the design of this room. But you'd never have a room like this in the Renaissance with big spans across the top made possible by the great new invention of steel construction. The decorating of the room, Tiffany Glass and Decorating Company. Everyone thinks of Tiffany as mosaics and stained glass. They were master decorators in painted color. So this room is all made out of plaster and marble. The plaster was all intricately painted under the direction of Tiffany Glass and Decorating. The walls now read a bright red. In 1897, they were even a deeper red. In fact, they were rubbed with seven different colors of red, all mixed together the way you'd layer an oil painting. And this would give a real warmth to it. Many of the descriptions of the building in 1897 wondered if the intensity of this red was too strong for people to sit and quietly read but it's managed to survive. This is a simplified version, but it'll still get you the idea. We'll get those extra colors in there someday. The pilasters still have much of its original decoration from Tiffany Glass and Decorating Company. Silver leaf that is rubbed with colors to emphasize the relief. Those original colors are still evident in many of the areas of three-dimensional design on the ceiling. One thing that you certainly would not have had in the Renaissance is this much window. This room is all window, just about. And part of that is for the fact that was throughout the design of this building, artificial light was terrible. This was a place to read. You needed to get every bit of light in here you could. So this whole end of the building is opened up with as large a windows as possible. At the time this building was built, the technology was in place that you could make beautiful ornamental ironwork by just casting it. There was a deliberate attempt to actually honor and reuse fading old technologies. And one of those was blacksmithing, where you actually forge things with fire and anvil and hammer and put things together intricately as a craft. Chicago still had master blacksmiths and the company that did the metalwork for the building employed many of them. And so there are grills in this room that actually are made out of hammered metal. This grill is actually made that there are no screws holding it together. This was all taken out of pieces of iron forged to create these shapes. These straps were put on hot and forged around it. It is a virtuoso piece of craftsmanship that was slowly disappearing, and we're really proud to be able to have them in this building. Could have they have cast this in 1897? Yes, they could, but they really wanted to honor a dying technology and to make use of the master practitioners who still were masters of that craft in 1897.